years ago, I was walking through the Avalon Mall, I was Christmas shopping with my wife, when all of a sudden I got this blinding migraine, and I got this pain up and down my right side, and my hand and my foot went completely numb. So, after a quick trip to the ER, a CAT scan, an MRI, a lumbar puncture later, I was told I had multiple sclerosis. I thought my life was over. I figured I'd be in a wheelchair within a year, I just knew it. So, like a lot of people, what did I do? I turned to Google to confirm my fears. <laughs> More accurately, I actually went to Google Images, and I searched MS wheelchair. And sure enough, I came up with hundreds of hits of people who have MS who are confined to wheelchairs. So that was it for me. That was all the evidence I needed. Now, speaking of evidence, this is the actual levels of evidence we use in science and in medicine. Some of you may recognize it. We call it the evidence pyramid. I think just to make it sound a bit cooler. At the bottom, we have things like expert opinion. And as we move our way up, we get into things like randomized control trials, meta-analyses, and systematic reviews. It's basically what we use to judge whether evidence or research is of low quality or high quality. And as we move up the pyramid, we basically go from opinion to fact. But lately, it seems like we're ignoring the entire pyramid and instead relying on one true genius, or one person who we think just knows everything. And our pyramid actually starts to look a bit more like this. I just know. We'll call this the I just know principle. I just know I got the flu from the flu shot, even though we know you can't get the flu from the flu shot. <laughs> or I just know I got sick because I went out in the rain without my coat, even though we know it's viruses and bacteria that make us sick and not the weather or how I just knew that I would end up in a wheelchair. So after my Google Images search that day, the science part of me, the epidemiologist in me, urged me to push a little bit deeper, so I did. And I did a bit more research online, some more reputable sites, and actually maybe, you know, talked to the MS Society about it, and found out that no, I would most likely not be in a wheelchair. I'm very fortunate, the certain type of MS that I have is very rarely debilitating, only a certain percent even progress to the next stage of the disease, and even smaller percentage of that group end up in a wheelchair. So, how did I get there? How do we get there? How do we get to the point where we believe things with such conviction when the evidence points in the opposite direction? So to unpack the I just know principle, we need to come to terms with something I like to call intrinsic bias. Intrinsic bias is what underlies any of us just knowing anything. It what allows us to go from hearing an anecdote or hearing a story and making this jump from, well, I heard that that happened to one person, so that must happen to all the people all the time. We start to believe that the plural of anecdote is data, when in fact it isn't. So what exactly is intrinsic bias? Intrinsic bias is something that gets to our very core. It's bias that's shaped by our culture, our religion, the environment or political environment or economic situation in which we were raised. We might call it things like well-meaning bias or bias based on fear. It's a bias with good intentions. For example, I think it's safe to say that everybody believes in being healthy. Everybody wants to be healthy. But everybody has a slightly different idea of what being healthy actually means. I have a daughter. I love her very much. I want her to be healthy. Does that mean I should vaccinate her? Does it mean I shouldn't vaccinate her? Does it mean that I should get her up every morning and feed her vitamins and supplements and minerals? Should her and my entire family become vegetarian and gluten-free? But my grandfather ate Jig's dinner every Sunday of his life packed with salt beef and he lived to be 100. So let's dissect that. Let's dissect the I just know principle. Because I think now more than ever, we tend to discard any evidence that goes against our preconceived ideas. And we gather and we hoard, and more importantly, we believe any information that supports our preconceived ideas. We selectively consume this massive amount of information that's out there, whether it's good or bad. And what makes it bad? It's nothing inherently evil, I'd like to believe, but rather bad information is simply based on bad data. So. We're going to run through a couple quick epidemiology-style exercises. We'll do some super fun math. Everybody loves math. <laughs> All right? So a few years ago, uh, there was an outbreak of whooping cough. It's also known as pertussis in an elementary school down in the States. 
And following the outbreak, these are three different headlines that came out. 77% of cases in whooping cough outbreak were fully vaccinated. Now this is a headline that a Facebook friend of mine shared. Didn't read the article, read the headline. And based on the headline, he just knew that vaccines were bad and he was gonna share this headline. Unvaccinated children had five-fold risk of getting pertussis. Now this is a headline another friend of mine shared and actually gave my other friend quite an earful because they read this headline and they just knew that vaccines are the only way to go. Pertussis outbreak in elementary school with a high vaccination rate. Now this is the headline that I read and I knew based on this headline, I was gonna have to read the actual story and get to the facts behind the case. And so here they are. There was 208 elementary school students in this school and 195 of them were fully vaccinated against pertussis. 13 of them were not. There's 35 cases of pertussis in the outbreak. 27 out of the 35 kids were in the fully vaccinated group, and eight of them were in the non-vaccinated group. So let's go back to those three headlines and we'll pick them apart. We'll pick apart their intrinsic biases and we'll pick apart their I just know mentalities. The first one was 77% of cases in whooping cough outbreak were fully vaccinated. This is one came from the anti-vaccine website. Now the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, is this headline true? Yes, it is, technically this is true. 27 out of the 35 kids who got sick were vaccinated, which equals 77% although it doesn't really tell us the whole story. Unvaccinated children had five-fold risk of getting pertussis. This is from a pro-vaccine website. Again, is this true? Yes, technically, this is also true. We know that 27 out of the 195 vaccinated kids got sick, which works out to about 14%. And we know that eight out of the 13 not vaccinated kids also got sick, which works out to about 62%. Now. The authors of this article, they got a little clever and a little crafty with their statistics. I won't go into it, I won't bore you with that. But they had to do some clever rounding and they omitted certain kids in order to get this five-fold risk number. And all that shows is that the pro-vaccine side and the pro-science side, we're not immune to intrinsic bias. We're not immune to the I just know mentality either. The same way the anti-vaccine website omitted the fact that unvaccinated kids were much more likely to get sick during the outbreak. Pertussis outbreak in an elementary school with high vaccination rate. So this is the headline that I read. And again, is it true? Yes, technically this is true. 195 out of the 208 kids in this school were fully vaccinated, which gives us a coverage rate of 94%, which I think most people would agree is a very high vaccination rate. So each of these three headlines, when you read them, you can see how their intrinsic bias and their I just know feeling comes through whether that's anti-vaccine, pro-vaccine, or seemingly trying to be neutral. Now, sometimes intrinsic bias can be a bit more sinister, a bit more devious. We'll call it bias with an agenda. We see this a lot in alternative health and we see it a lot in politics. For example, this is a graph that Fox News put up showing just how far the Obama administration is away from meeting their goal of Obamacare enrollment. If you look closely at the graph, I think it's pretty obvious that you can see there's something a little off about it. <laughs> Perhaps the scale is a little bit off. Now here's the correct graph that Fox News and their affiliates had to air the next day along with an apology, which I think shows obviously a lot more accurately um, the actual numbers. But that's just one small example of how I just know can go from that simple thing to I just know or we just know and you should all just know it too. It's bias with an agenda. Now, what we just know can change. This is the good news. I bet you everybody here has changed something they believe in more recently than you think, just with something small, something where the stakes are low. For example, I used to argue with my wife all the time that Amy Adams was married to the guy who played Borat. I would swear up and down that this was true, I just knew it. And then finally one day I guess she had had enough and she pulled up Amy Adams' biography on IMDb and showed me that no, uh, Amy Adams is not married to the guy who plays Borat. He is in fact married to someone named Isla Fisher, who in my defense, I think looks a lot like Amy Adams. <laughs> and actually as I'm looking at this now, I honestly can say I actually don't know which one is which. but. <laughs> 
But the point is, I had a belief. I had something that I just knew was true. I was shown evidence to the contrary, and based on that evidence, I changed my belief. So why can't we do that with the bigger things? Why can't we do that with things in health and medicine? The challenge we have and the challenge we face is that we must be willing to see our own biases and try to see past them. We must be willing to put these biases and put our preconceived ideas up in the face of real, solid evidence. And if it doesn't stand up to that evidence, change them. And speaking of change, I think if we want to change the levels of evidence pyramid I showed earlier, I think this is the only real way that we should do it. Thank you very much.